What's up, everybody? Welcome to my SmackDown review. Uh, Philadelphia, not Philadelphia, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania tonight. Uh, SmackDown as we kicked it off with AJ Styles coming out. Pretty much talking about Shane McMahon. He was looking for Shane McMahon. And talking about the conspiracies that have been going against him lately. And Shane will be here later, but he's going to be waiting for him. Because he knows what he's going to tell him. Because, you know, he's been here. He's, you know, he's just... I'm one of the greatest people, you know, I should be main event WrestleMania. I'm the one that's been bringing up the network subscribers on the WWE Network, and, you know, and talk about how John Cena just gets a title shot because he just says he gets it. And he knows he's lost to Cena, and he expected a rematch, but I was, he was given a triple threat match, and then Elimination Chamber, and then against other wrestlers, then a Battle Royale, then had to beat Luke Harper, and pretty much that's so, all, you know, Randy only has to burn down a house. And wasn't arrested, but he gets the main at WrestleMania. I, I he burns down a house, but I, but I have to earn my shot down, no, shot to be in WrestleMania. He's having the best wrestle of 2016. He put SmackDown on the map, and you know he doesn't even have a match at WrestleMania. So he thought about you know I could slap Daniel Bryan, but he's just nothing but a puppet. But Shane McMahon is behind this, and he's gonna come off with Shane McMahon. And also tonight we only had a two-man announcing JBL and Corey, and Corey Grace, um, Tom Phillips. Since Marlon Nalo couldn't make it to the show because of the blizzard that's going on right now, and David Otunga is filming a movie, so we only had a two-man team. So it won't be confusing and a lot happening. Uh, people going back and forth making stupid lines, <clears throat> but. AJ pretty much was going to be looking for Shane McMahon all night waiting in the parking lot as we had Becky Lynch and Natalya. Um, pretty much Becky Lynch went with the disarmor, not much to say here. Then Carmella came out and pretty much kicked both of them, um, Natalya and Becky Lynch, and she'll pretty much be part of this whole uh, women's thing. They say any available women, so Carmella is on the roster, so we only got five people in this thing. So it should be coming out of the title and expect more. Hopefully Naomi will return, which I do see coming, but we'll have to find out and see if Naomi comes back. But expect more women to be part of this whole um, title thing of what's going on at uh, WrestleMania. AJ was still looking for him. Uh, well, AJ was still looking for Shane McMahon and back. Miz TV happened as Miz and Maurice are out there. There's... Um, Miz says he hasn't even hit the tip of the iceberg with the whole Cena and Nikki thing. That they're frauds, they're fakes, and that, you know, Nikki Bella's jealous because Maurice has a, a wedding ring on her finger. But Miz, Miz pretty much has Maurice to tell a story about uh, Nikki stabbing her. And, you know, I've heard this story many years ago about Total Divas. There was something said about Kelly Kelly and uh, Maurice was supposed to be on there. And that Nikki didn't want her not to sign a contract and she said she trusted her and everything but it didn't go down but Maurice pretty much says Nikki stabbed her in the back and she pretty much went and said you know the reason why she's on the show well she said she was taking her friend but you know she can be on the show because she's dating John Cena that makes her untouchable I can believe that story in a way even though this is nothing we haven't heard before and almost if it's all true and fans have said this before um, I wouldn't be surprised if that story was true if it was a shoot. So, then it was the whole total Bellas and that they're going to get revenge. And she's pretty much going to get, get, um, hmm. She's going to get Nikki Bella and pretty much I'm going to expose that bitch for what she is and get payback on her. Until John Cena came out with uh, Nikki Bella and Nikki took the microphone and talked about Maurice, like, you know, you just steal money and everything. Even, um, you know, Miz showed the, uh, from a, the video from SmackDown Live next, last, not SmackDown, but the Talking Smack last week, which a lot of stuff that was true. John Cena talking like a robot, which was funny and why he has a, you know, he was on a little shoot mode last week on that Talking Smack show, which this is stuff. This has been said before, so uh, this is all pretty much a shoot, but he's the heel for some reason. But, um, Maurice, not Maurice, um, he wanted a match, he wanted to kick 
Maurice's ass, but Miz says, you don't make the match with even you are John Cena until Daniel Bryan came out. And he says, you know, my time isn't up. And he said, you know, this is Miz TV, and all you've done is run your mouth. And he would love to punch him in the face. He would love to take down Miz. Daniel Bryan wants you, but I want to punch you in your face. You mock, me, you mock my moves. You do them poorly. You can impersonate me well. And you make, like, my, my offense moves just look horrible. But, and I want you to punch you in the face, but I can't do that. So, at WrestleMania, which we all knew what was coming, John Cena and Nikki Bella versus Miz and Maurice. So, some people think she will be proposed at WrestleMania, even though, once again, I do feel like this is a step down for John Cena and it makes him feel Bush League. And he said in interviews, he doesn't make the matches. And I don't think he ever wanted to do this match to begin with. It's not his idea, but if you've heard him say it before in his own family shoot, I'd rather be facing The Undertaker. And to be honest, I'd rather see John Cena versus The Undertaker anyways than Roman Reigns versus The Undertaker. I'm sure anybody would want to see that. But we gotta deal what we gotta deal with. So, you know... Maurice pretty much actually put a pretty cut a pretty much a good promo, and she didn't even say much. So, but uh, hey, she got a good promo out there. I can't really um, complain with that. So hey, I didn't mind it. I actually enjoyed it. So I won't really actually say anything bad about that promo. <clears throat> but uh, as we continue with the show, um, after they finished the whole promo thing, yeah, I'm sure John Cena. We're pretty much trying to get revenge for Daniel Bryan since he can't actually do anything to wrestle against him. That will happen. Uh, Alexa Bliss winning against Mickey James. And a very weird match. Which, um, the crowd was very quiet for. And it wasn't a bad match. But I don't know if Mickey James turned face in that, so. I, I, I don't know. She did beat. Alexa was clean with the mid kick. Just wasn't really uh, nothing else to say about that match. It like the crowd was just quiet. Like the match just happened just because. It just kind of felt random. Just very random. Um, Renee was on AJ Styles in the back then until AJ Styles says, you know, it was, oh yeah, WrestleMania's nothing to do a ride. As AJ Styles was ducking under a car, as Shane McMahon got out of his car, AJ pretty much snuck up on him and caught Shane McMahon slipping. And he pretty much jumped him and started beating his head into the wall and knocking him everywhere into a table and put his head through a car window, which he started bleeding in. Next thing you know, Finley of all people came back and uh, told AJ to stop as AJ kept kicking him as Shane was bleeding from the top of his head. So pretty much we're going to get AJ Styles versus uh, Shane McMahon at WrestleMania. That's pretty much how that's going to go, but uh, yeah. Well, um, uh, yeah, he beat him up, so I guess Shane McMahon is the face and AJ Styles is the heel. Which EMTs were helping Shane McMahon then, and, you know, EMTs and Finley were sitting there making sure he was okay. AJ Styles was in the pretty much locker room as the Usos and Kurt Hawkins started talking to them. Like, why would you do something like that? You're nuts and everything. And then AJ left the room, Daniel Bryan approached him and said, you're, you're the act of a coward. Which it is the act of a coward. He said, what are you going to do, fire me? He said, yeah, man, I'm going to fire you. And he told him to get out of here. And pretty much have security guards or have him arrested and exit the building. Which, you know, it's kind of funny about the Usos, too, since we haven't seen any tag teams in almost three weeks now. But they're the ones sitting back there and <laughs> getting mad at um, Getting mad at AJ Styles for what he did. They got mad at AJ Styles for what he did out there and beating up um, Shane McMahon. But where did the Usos um, beating up guys on SmackDown when they turned heel and trying to injure them? So, Dan Bryan pretty much was stern and um, getting rid of AJ Styles right now and did what he had to do. But, um, he, you know, he fired him, allegedly, we'll say that. But um, the Usos kind of being back there to say something after they're the ones they're supposed to be heels right now didn't make a lot of sense. But, um, Dan Bryan was fed up with AJ Styles and had him kicked off of there tonight. Um, 
Mojo Raleigh versus Dolph Ziggler. Who cares? Count out Ziggler, so I did not really care where this went, which I don't know. Ziggler still comes out as Dolph Ziggler face, whatever. Why is he facing Mojo? I don't care about the Andre Giant Battle Royale right? thing that much anymore. Ziggler's Mojo will most likely well, Mojo's in it, most likely Ziggler will be in it too. Um Next they showed um, the Shane McMahon thing which they had footage from inside the car with Shane's head going through it, which kind of some people say killed the realism to it because why would there be a camera inside of the car and you guys just happen to get that footage? It's like okay, it happened a camera just happened to be in the car. Which was still good and you know still cool seeing his head go through it, but just kinda kinda odd. You know, his head's in the car. Like it was good when you saw it on the outside, but when you actually put a how did a real camera get in the car that would just happen to sit there and just do it? I don't know. Randy Orton came out, talked about him burning down the white uh, compound. Um yeah, I know this is kind of, kind of funny to say right here that um, somebody said this to me tonight on Twitter that so let, let the record show that um, uh, something that you know you can beat up Shane McMahon you'll get fired but if you burn down the house and you know that's a great a grave and stuff you're okay but Orton said you know he could have hit RK on Bray Wyatt that's not what he wanted he said, he said he got, that's not what he wanted he wanted to hit him where it hurts if you can't beat him join him and then you screw him. And he says, you know, he hit Wyatt where it hurt. You know, he destroyed Sister Abigail's um, spirit. And, you know, he says, Wyatt wasn't alone. He's going to take out Bray Wyatt at WrestleMania. He says, I swear to God, he's going to take everything away from him. He's going to take that title away from him and Mania. Which, um, Bray Wyatt showed up on the screen and said, you know, I've lost my power and it's in a dark room and what's left of his home, but. You burned, you thought you burned the soul of Sister Abigail, but you know, the spawn of Satan, whatever forced it. I don't know where this whole, this whole focus stuff is going. It's not even Undertaker worthy, but Wyatt pretty much, um, talked about Sister Abigail's power. They have no boundaries, and you know, they're all seeing and stuff, and that they are, they will purge, and they're coming for Orton, and she, Sister Abigail has a witness that he is now born again. Which he pretty much picked up the ashes of um, Sister Abigail and pretty much smeared it all over his body and held up his arms and said, Follow the buzzards and screamed then. That's what he did. So he pretty much did some type of crazy, um, I don't know where this spirit, hocus pocus, or wherever this is gonna go, but I don't know. We went from burning down houses to now putting the ashes. On yourself of a dead person. Okay. Okay. Baron Corbin was in the Mavi interview saying he didn't cross the line on Dean Ambrose. He said, you know, I put him in the hospital. If he's that good at getting up, I'm going to take his intercontinental title, which I'm not involved somewhere else this morning. He said, you can beat up Shane McMahon and you're fired, but if I put a forklift over your chest, you know, it's all good. It's all good then. So, you know, he's going to take, take, everything's about taking now, this is getting a little funny, but, um, <clears throat> well, funny thing about taking, I'll say that, um, the main event of this show, which even I was surprised to see, after two and a half weeks of being disappeared, and I don't know why this match was made, was made until WrestleMania, which no one has actually heard, I mean, this may have been the quietest match I've ever seen before, which people started to chant, we want Angle, or Angle, since this is Pittsburgh and Kurt Angle is from here, American Alpha went against the Usos, in a very underwhelming match, which wasn't actually bad, but no one cared, crowd was quiet, very quiet, and most of this match was showing Shane McMahon walking in the back with Jamie Noble and Finley, so... It's almost like nobody didn't care for this match, and they just started chanting V1 Angle. It was a very, very quiet, very quiet match. So it wasn't a lot to be said from here. And then after the match, which I'm, I guess I don't know why they didn't wait until WrestleMania, but the Usos won with a super kick. 
which will probably still get the match at WrestleMania anyways for the tag team title, so expect that to happen. You know, the tag teams have been missing for two weeks. We pretty much went to Shane McMahon as he came out and finally came back to the ring after walking in the back saying, if AJ Styles doesn't have a rest point for WrestleMania, he does now, which will most likely be him and the show pretty much abruptly ended and went to a different TV show. So it pretty much cut away after that, and we didn't really get a reaction. But, um... I don't know, so a lot of these, this show tonight, I don't want to say it was a weak show, but it was very odd, odd random matches that would just happen to be happening. We had AJ throw, throw Shane's head through a glass window, through a car. Bray Wyatt smear ashes of a dead person, Sister Abigail over himself. Very random matches from the Usos and... American Alpha, which the crowd was very quiet for, and random women's matches from Alexa Bliss and Mickey James and Mickey James winning, which, like I said, the crowd was very quiet. And the Miz TV segment with Miz and Maurice and Cena, which, like I said, I'm not really, I was never on for this match. And John Cena just kind of someone acts corny in the background sometimes when he was out there too. But Miz was and Maurice were nearly shooting, a lot of shooting on there, even showing footage when that kid's choice over to that on Saturday. So it was a very odd show still leading into WrestleMania. Mojo and Dolph Ziggler, I can give two craps about and don't care. So I don't know what crazy things we're going to see next, but I just find it funny to say, hey, I can burn down somebody's house and get a title shot, but I'll get fired if I hit Shane McMahon. And go fork with some people, but I'll get fired if I hit Shane McMahon. And I, I feel bad for the Usos in um, American Alpha because, like I said, their tag team match wasn't actually that bad, but no one cared. And he just focused on Shane McMahon walking in the crowd on double screen most of the time. So, it's not like to say from SmackDown tonight. And, you know, we're still leading into WrestleMania and everything, but that was pretty much the show. And those are some, I guess, some of the highlights of it. But, uh, we had, I guess, a decent show, but Pittsburgh was very quiet and a lot of crowds did just not care out there. It just wasn't a lot happening. But, I mean, it's not like the wooden promo wasn't bad, but the smearing of the ashes. And there was going to be a lot of weird stuff happening with Wyatt and Wharton for when they come to WrestleMania for the WWE title. AJ versus Shane is pretty much now definitely happening, so get ready for that. And like I said, a lot of random matches, add more women to these title match, this title match and stuff. But um, that's what I got to say from there. But I'm out of here. I'll see you guys later. Peace out. It's just kind of funny that AJ Styles should be getting a better match at WrestleMania than this. Most likely a title match, but hey, if it's Shane McMahon. But most likely both will be cheered. Peace out. And check out my Raw and Ring of Honor um, 15th anniversary review. I'm out here. See you guys later. Peace.